Good afternoon everyone, my name is Dr. Miller and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-6333, Delta Level Tier Documentation Access. Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures. Standard access protocols, for example Level 4 and Level 5 permissions, do not apply to SCP-6333 documentation. Access to preliminary SCP-6333 documentation is provided to site directors of facilities containing a minimum of 100 officially designated SCP anomalies. Site directors may provide O5 approved abridged versions of SCP-6333 documentation to their designated emergency successors as desired. Access to comprehensive documentation designated across five access tiers may be requested by site directors whose corresponding sites have successfully maintained care of an SCP-6333-2 instance for at least three consecutive decades. All SCP-6333-1 instances are to be carefully catalogued and kept in high-priority secure storage at sites designated by O5 council member consensus. Instances not pertaining to hardwood tree species may be requested for use when seeking uncontained SCP-6333-1 instances. Permission from a majority of O5 Council members is required prior to the planting of any SCP-6333-1 instances. SCP-6333-2 containment chambers must be equipped with air filtration systems, artificial sunlight lamps, water distillation pumps, and gardening supplies as appropriate. Manufactured objects containing iron are not permitted within SCP-6333-2 enclosures. Ideally, SCP-6333-2 instances are to be contained underground, though exceptions may be made for instances that exceed 3 meters in height. A team of at least 10 on-site researchers led by the site director is to be assigned to each site's SCP-6333-2 instance. As of 2020, the 12 largest Foundation facilities worldwide each possess one SCP-6333-2 instance that has exceeded 50 years of age. Foundation sites seeking to host a SCP-6333-2 instance must petition the O5 Council with a detailed analysis of containment history, personal psychological evaluations, employee turnover statistics, and resource allocation budgeting. Due to the extreme scarcity of SCP-6333-1, and surviving SCP-6333-2 instances, experimentation involving SCP-6333 is to be kept at an absolute minimum. Description SCP-6333 refers to a set of plant-based anomalies, SCP-6333-1 and SCP-6333-2. SCP-6333-1 are anomalous seeds, primarily of plant species commonly sold as indoor houseplants for hobbyists. SCP-6333-1 instances are visually and physically identical to non-anomalous variants, but will produce visible and infrared light of increasing intensity when in close proximity to other SCP-6333-1 and SCP-6333-2 instances. SCP-6333-2 refers to plants grown from SCP-6333-1 instances. The noted variations between SCP-6333-2 instances and their non-anomalous counterparts are as follows. SCP-6333-2 possess extremely heightened longevity. SCP-6333-2 grow into increasingly warped and irregular forms as they age eventually only vaguely resembling their apparent species. SCP-6333-2 do not produce seeds or flowers. SCP-6333-2 flourish best when kept in the same vicinity as other anomalous objects, particularly living anomalous entities. The area of effect for this attribute increases with the age of the SCP-6333-2 instance. SCP-6333-2 exhibit immediate negative reactions when artificial substances are applied to any part of the plant. SCP-6333-2 grant positive effects to individuals that they recognize as caretakers during certain stages of cultivation. See Addendum 6333-1. Addendum 6333-1. Delta Level. List of SCP-6333-2 instances and assigned sites catalogued within the past 10 years. 
instance number SCP-6333-2AE. -E. Assigned Site, Site-64. Species, Euphorbia pulcherima poinsettia. Anomaly Variant, Gaucarena. Recovery Details. Obtained from an apartment in Oregon, United States. Initial caretaker was a graphic designer who relied on freelance commissions for income. Analysis of soil composition indicated the presence of partially decayed organic matter, likely composted byproducts of the caretaker's cooking. Specific Observations SCP-6333-2AE responds well to application of various types of fertilizers and nutrient mixes. On days when fertilizer was applied to SCP-6333-2AE, Reports were noted of staff within the site suddenly recovering from minor ailments such as allergies, fatigue, and aches. Care Modification History While commercially produced fertilizers are viable, SCP-6333-2AE appears to respond best to handmade or naturally produced nutrient additives such as food waste compost produced on site and wastewater from freshwater aquariums. Provided the health of SCP-6333-2AE is retained, researchers assigned to it will be transitioning from using both commercial and handmade fertilizers to using solely non-commercial fertilizers. Instance number SCP-6333-2AF Assigned Site, Site-36 Species, Gymnocalcium myhana witchi, Grafted Moon Cacti Anomaly Variant, Jian Mu Recovery details. Obtained from a street food stand in Kolkata, India. The vendor was noted to have no formal education, but demonstrated significant aptitude for learning to speak new languages. Locals familiar with the vendor reported witnessing them frequently speak to SCP-6333-2AF when practicing new words in foreign languages. Specific observations. Following initial transport of the instance to Site-36, Personnel noted that it appeared discolored and did not respond well to usual plant care. One of the researchers assigned to the entity took the initiative to recite nursery rhymes and tongue twisters in three languages to SCP-6333-2AF for 30 minutes, following which the instance's coloration returned to its initial state. The researcher has been commended for their quick thinking. Care Modification History Tentatively Assigned a designated team of researchers is to rotate schedules for reading aloud to SCP-6333-2AF for three hours each day. Reading material is to be submitted and approved by the site director. Priority is given to determining whether SCP-6333-2AF exhibits preferences for certain kinds of listening material. Intelligence test batteries have been requested to determine if these reading sessions affect the research team in any way. Instance number SCP-6333-2 AG Assigned Site, Site-45 Species, Drosanthemum floribundum, Rosea ice plant Anomaly Variant, Yax Imix, Che Recovery Details Obtained from the office space of a national park near Perth, Australia, animals of the park had previously been targeted by poachers. Recent observations indicated fewer poaching attempts due to trespassers experiencing a sudden loss of ability to navigate the park space. Specific Observations SCP-6333-2AG seems to attract more ambient flying pests than other instances. Pests approaching SCP-6333-2AG abruptly lose sense of direction upon entering within a 500 centimeter radius of its container. Individuals tasked with removal of pests Upon successful completion of the task, report that for the following few hours they are able to automatically identify the shortest and most efficient pathways to various locations within the site. Care Modification History Current care plan is sufficient. Suggestions raised regarding potential D-class experimentation to determine if disorientation effect can be manifested upon humans in a controlled setting. Instance Number SCP-6333-2 C Alpha Assigned Site 19 Species Pachira Aquatica Money Tree Anomaly Variant Yggdrasil Recovery Details Successfully pruned from SCP-6333-2 C and rooted, blessed as viable by Serpent's Hand clerics, 
one of two cuttings in the first recorded successful human-initiated propagation of SCP-6333-2. Specific Observations No immediate effects noted. However, Serpent's Hand Associates have acknowledged SCP-6333-2C Alpha generating what they believe to be an immature way. Such a gateway would allow for single-direction travel to the Wanderer's Library should SCP-6333-2C Alpha continue to mature in good health. Care Modification History Current care plan is sufficient. Discussions underway regarding additional protections should a complete way entry manifest. Instance Number SCP-6333-2C Beta Location Unknown Species Pachira aquatica, money tree. Anomaly variant Yggdrasil. Recovery details. Successfully pruned from SCP-6333-2C 6333 and rooted, blessed as viable by Serpent's Hand clerics, one of two cuttings in the first recorded successful human-initiated propagation of SCP-6333. Specific observations. SCP-6333-2C beta has exhibited the most extensive and immediate recorded root growth, requiring multiple container changes to accommodate its increasingly large root system. As of the last recorded behavioral log, SCP-6333-2C beta has produced additional anomalies. Specifically, all handheld pipettes used to dispense water in the enclosure now repel loose particulate matter, dirt, dust, etc. And if left atop freshly turned earth, will cause seedlings to sprout from beneath the pipette and grow in a linear trail towards SCP-6333-2C beta. Care Modification History Per a non-unanimous O5 majority vote, to avoid further containment breaches and to better ascertain the health of SCP-6333-2C beta, the instance has been released to Serpent's Hand custody. Records will become available from Serpent's Hand caregivers when the instance is settled in its new habitat. Addendum 6333-2 Delta Level The first SCP-6333-1 instances came into Foundation possession in February of 1979 when a conference of ambassadors was called between the Foundation and various tentatively allied groups of interest. The Serpent's Hand provided each convoy with three SCP-6333-1 instances after ascertaining each group's ability to cultivate, rather than exploit, the eventual SCP-6333-2 entity. The Foundation was one of the few groups informed of the exact mechanics of the seeking effect SCP-6333-1 instances possess. It is currently unknown how many SCP-6333 instances remain outside of Foundation guardianship. Based on current consensus, resources will remain devoted to the care and protection of current SCP-6333 entities rather than attempting to seize the instances in the custody of antagonistic groups of interest. Should SCP-6333-2 instances be determined capable of manifesting autonomous anomalous entities, a reconnaissance team is to be formed to collect information on the progression of other groups SCP-6333-2 instances. If necessary, the Foundation will attempt to convene a second conference. It has been proposed that allowing multiple groups of interest to continue cultivating SCP-6333, regardless of intent, will result solely in positive consequences for all groups, regardless of existing alliances. Whether this is truly the case remains to be determined. This concludes today's lecture. Thank you for listening, if indeed you still are, and you are all dismissed. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to Zolfex99, Ian J. Alsop, Zargaron, Professor Puffer, The Morrigan, Retalius, Karim L. Ashmui, Talk of Villagers, Gabriel Hawkins, Nate Decline, Lost Boy, African Submarine Vor, Amir Saban, Savanity, Christoph Kozak Slezak, 
HMS Lily, the Almighty Fish, Gav the Clumsy Containment Specialist, Spooky Aqua, Pure Osmium, Sayo Dio Demnatus, Brian Sanchez, Matthew Gilmore, Drew Peacock, Eric Corbidge, Longinus, James Saba, and NJ Vojak. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash the Volgan. Thank you.